pandemic took us by surprise and our lives have been altered forever. For Christians, the situation we're in touches one of the most sensitive nerves of the faith. How do we account for horrible suffering, even innocent suffering, in a world where we believe God is both good and all-powerful? For this lecture series, we've invited some of our best professors to give us their best with the following instructions. Help us make sense of our world at the intersection of suffering, thoughtful Christian faith, and your own academic discipline. And so we present to you the George Fox Digital Pandemic Lectures on Suffering and Faith. As a licensed professional counselor, I listen to suffering every day, but rarely am I tasked with talking about it outside of the mental health counseling room and context. But talking about suffering makes sense. To talk about suffering right now is to acknowledge the collective experience of suffering that the pandemic has brought by way of fear, death, exhaustion, and instability. And although the impact of the pandemic is not encountered equally, our collective experience of suffering is held by God. Where did the suffering begin and where does suffering end? And in the grand story that the Bible offers to us, we have an instance of a woman who's suffered for so long. And in the story, we see that God is not afraid to be close to us or to be touched by our suffering. In the Gospel of Mark, the narrator invites us to experience God's sovereignty and to experience a miracle in the midst of a miracle. In chapter 5, Jesus is on his way to the home of a synagogue leader, a father, to heal his dying daughter. And it was then that an unnamed woman interrupts this very important journey of Jesus, our Christ. The scriptures read, starting at verse 21, And when Jesus had crossed over in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered from under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garment, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched me? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. As I stated earlier, God is not afraid to be close to us or be touched by our suffering. He made that abundantly clear on the cross when he took our sins on himself that we might be saved. This woman, 
This woman who by all standards of her culture and Mosaic law was deemed unclean, whose normal existence would often have been spent watching people skirt around her to avoid the possibility of contact. She lived in isolation, shame, and loneliness. How much more physical, mental, social, and financial suffering could she handle? At this point, after 12 long years of pain, agony, and isolation, it seems then that what drove her to touch the hem of Jesus' garment was not blind faith, but rather directive faith. This hemorrhaging woman's story interacts with all of our stories because we, like her, have been in need of some healing. The public health directed quarantine in what is almost a year now has brought about significant changes in personal and public ways of connecting with each other. Activities and relationships have either ended or shifted to accommodate individual, family, community, regional, national, world safety. As much as so many people have done to create safety, suffering abounds. As a mental health professional, counselor, a therapist, I provide guidance and support and treatment for people who are dealing with cognitive, behavioral, and emotional issues such as fear, trauma, sadness, loneliness, and stress. During this time in our lives, as we face and manage misery and grief caused by the pandemic, racial unrest, political upheaval, and financial instability, I have been a witness to people suffering and shared in it. I find so much to gain from the miracle of the woman with the issue of blood. During my quiet time with the Lord, I hear him say, risk reaching out. In the story of this incredible woman, we see her risking, risking rejection, risking humiliation, risking attack, risking her safety, but her desperation, faith, an expectation of what Jesus could do, because could is the belief that an action or event is possible. She risked reaching out to Christ and found healing in her effort. So this is what I'd like to encourage all of my family in Christ to do. Risk reaching out. Researchers published an article June of 2020 called The Trajectory of Loneliness in Response to COVID-19. They took a nationwide sample to explore changes in loneliness in response to the social restriction measures taken to control the coronavirus' spread. And given the significant concerns that popular press articles and scientific publications have stated about social and physical distancing leading to increased loneliness, the researchers assumed that people would have experienced greater levels of loneliness uh, as the pandemic bared down on our country. However, their findings were contrary to what they expected. Participants perceived that they experienced more support from others over the study period, which culminated in the experience that even if connections are happening in ways other than in person, individuals, families, and communities can still come together and feel emotionally close. How profound. That in the midst of suffering, God's grace, God's grace abounds. This study recommended that we do consider individual experiences of loneliness and suffering, especially for older adults, people living alone, and those with compromised health status. There's still work to be done and connections to be made. When we risk reaching out to maintain and build relationships, we experience healing and the blows of suffering can be lessened. 
for support and mental and emotional health, please risk reaching out to a counselor. I invite you, take just a moment and reflect on your own unique ways of reaching out to God and community. Just a moment. How do you reach out? And if you do need a few ideas, some of the ways that I reach out are by calling ministers and mentors for encouragement and prayer, calling family members and friends for support and usually a lot of laughter. I'll read my Bible, devotionals, and pray. And I'll follow people on social media that inspire kindness, healing, and community. Just thinking about how do you reach out? So you just spent a moment thinking about ways that you reach out and perhaps people you can reach out to. Now shift and imagine yourself actually doing it. Who would you contact first? What passage in the Bible would you begin with? What would your text message say? And as you think about that, what experience comes up for you? Is it a sensation of fear, insecurity? Maybe it's warmth and longing. Now imagine that you receive the response that Jesus gave to the woman who risked reaching out. Hearing the care and the warmth of Jesus saying, my child, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Imagine if you risked reaching out and moved forward in peace. We began our time by thinking about the way Mark invited us to experience God's sovereignty, how he invited us to experience a miracle in the midst of a miracle. By the time Jesus had arrived at the Jewish leader's home, his daughter was declared dead by those at the house, and they said to the Jewish leader, ugh, why trouble the teacher any further? Well, guess what? <laughs> Unlike you and the woman with 12 years of hemorrhaging, these people did not risk reaching out. Jesus responded, do not fear, only believe. And soon this 12-year-old girl was raised from the dead. Praise God. The synagogue leader risked reaching out and found healing. And so as a counselor to many and your sister in faith, I want to end by quoting some lyrics from a beautiful song by a group called Maverick City Music called Promises. My husband and I love this song and we hope this will minister to you. Faithful through the ages, God of Abraham. You're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me.
from the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. You just heard from Professor Unique Page, visiting assistant professor of counseling. She's also the director of the George Fox University Counseling Clinic and the Portland Counseling and Training Center, and as a licensed professional counselor, serves individuals, couples, and families with specialties in adoption, blended families, and people from ethnic minority backgrounds. We have more lectures in this series. Check them out on our YouTube page for George Fox Digital.